All right. So hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome. Um, my name is Brother Ron from Metanoia Christian Ministries, and welcome sa inyo lahat. Uh, this is uh, part two of our God, Government, and the Bible series. And we have a, our dear brother here, si Attorney and Pastor Jeremiah Belka. So, you know, we've been doing this uh, series for the past month. I have, I have another series that I'm teaching myself. It's about Christian leadership and godly governance naman. And, you know, these are relevant topics that we really need to focus on today. You know, these are things that talagang kailangan natin mapag-usapan. These are things na kulang ang kaalaman natin bilang kristyano, bilang mga Christian uh, leaders and influencers sa lipunan. You know, kadalasan wala tayong pundasyon kung bakit natin pinaniniwalaan yung pinaniniwalaan natin. You know, we lack the foundation of, you know, just understanding why we believe what we believe. So this is a great learning opportunity for us to arm ourselves and equip ourselves with the right knowledge, with the scriptures, the word of God, to support and for us to understand, you know, ano ba talaga yung will ni God para sa gobyerno, will ni God para sa atin, will ni God para sa lipunan. And this is something that's super, super beneficial. So I'm so excited that we have this teaching series today. I am so excited that we have this opportunity to just learn and sharpen one another and, and we have great resource speakers and so much material na marami ditong, marami ditong hindi mo maririnig kahit saan. You know, so uh, again, we, we are a teaching ministry. Here in Metanoia, we are a teaching and word ministry. Now, focus talaga namin, salita ng Diyos. We're here to equip the saints and this is something that is super aligned. Kaya we praise God for the partnership we have with Attorney Pastor Jeremiah. Talagang sobrang blessed kami sa buhay niya. And um, we, we, we praise God for the availability also, despite the busy schedule na magawa natin to. And we get these teaching materials out there so that it's available for all. So with that, can, we, can I just pray for you guys? Can we just start off in prayer? Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you right now. We just thank you, Lord. We just lift you up. We thank you, Lord, that you are a good God. We thank you that you're a good, good Father, that you care about us, Lord, that you love us. You love our country. You love each, each family that's here. You want the best for us. You said in your word that your plans for us are good, not evil. Plans for a future and a hope that we know, Lord, that you have a beautiful plan for the Philippines, Lord. Nagpapasalamat kami, Lord, na napakagandang plano niyo para sa amin, sa bansa namin. Lord, and, and, and I know that you have been raising up leaders in the government, in all areas of society, in the private sector, sa lahat, Lord. You know, just to be a blessing, to the country and to the world. So I pray that the word preached today through Pastor Jeremiah, Father, would just, you know, would really take root in the hearts of everyone watching, everyone listening, everyone through Zoom, everyone online. You know, I pray that, that the, the seed of the word would just grow and bear fruit in your heart and in your lives. I pray that the Holy Spirit would touch everyone's heart and just quicken this, pour out this revelation, pour out this wisdom, the supernatural wisdom from God, to strengthen us, to equip us as we move forward. So, Father, we thank you for all this. We speak blessing upon everyone here. We bless this place. We bless this whole event right now. And, of course, we bless our anointed speaker. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. So with that, let's welcome Pastor Jeremiah. Thank you, Pastor Ron. Um... We also have friends uh, joining us uh, via Zoom today. Okay. So yeah, I will just share my screen uh, for the benefit of those who are joining via Zoom. Okay, so we are now at uh, on our... On our second topic, uh, last week's topic, or two weeks ago, uh, we uh, talked about the unfinished work of a biblical reformation. So, okay, I'll just uh, show. I know about that. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so uh, we're done with part one. If you if you were if you were not able to uh, see part one, um, it's available. Po, I I believe that uh, Pastor Ron and the team already 
posted it sa kanila pong uh, Metanoia page. Uh, pwede niyo ito makita. So today will be uh, tackling about part two. Hopefully it would not be as long as part one. <laughs> but uh, very important. Very, very important. And I'm actually blessed just preparing for this. So next, uh, two weeks from now, it's Legislating Morality, Biblical Principles, and Separation of Church and State. And part four, which is connected to our topic for today, which is the Dominion Mandate and the Principles on Property Taxation and Welfare. It would have been a logical thing na isunod sana yung part two and part four, Pero because of uh, some uh, issues like uh, the SOGI and uh, other uh, morally charged topics, we will uh, first tackle part three, which is legislating morality later. Um, next, next week, okay? So let us now go to our topic. Ayo, ayan. Sorry. Okay. All right. So, so our topic for today is the responsibility of life, liberty, and property. Sabihin po natin responsibility. Okay. Let us pray. Father, we bless you. We glorify your name. We thank you for this time that you have given us to study and understand um, these things, Lord, that have been called, Lord, and distilized, Lord. sa puso at isipan ng mga iyong mga lingkod many, many years ago, Lord God, centuries ago. But Lord, today, help us to unravel, Lord, unravel before us, Lord, um, the wisdom. And also, Lord, we ask that you would supply us with the power to live out, Lord God, these freedoms and, this, and these rights, Lord, and use it, Lord God, and be responsible. We bless you, Lord. Buksan mong mga isi panambaw at isa panginoon that everyone would uh, not leave this place, Lord, not leave the, the Zoom call, Lord God, without any revelation from you. Bless your name, O Lord. We magnify your name. Bless our nation. In this we thank and pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, so the outline for discussion today is first we'll talk about the responsibility of life, liberty, and property as stated in the Bible. Second, pag makita ho natin the natural rights, social contract, and the historical de- development of this concept. Kasi pakita ho natin, ay nasa constitution natin yan, pero saan ho ba nagsimula yan? And number three, we'll talk about the American and French revolutions and their adoption of this inalienable right and natural rights. And number four, we will be talking about one of my heroes and favorite. Uh, regarding this topic, Mr. Frederick Bastiat and the uh, Christian responsibility to life, liberty, and property. And finally, the right to life, liberty, and property in the Philippines. Okay? Ready na po ba kayo? <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's start. So, responsibility of life, liberty, and property in the Bible. Okay. So, we, we know that God created man in his own image, right? And the man has a very special place because no other creature in the, in the entire creation na binigyan ho ng Panginoon ng kanya pong imahe. Just like your phone, your phone, if it has an Apple logo, uh, sapatos mo, merong uh, check na isang malaki, the manufacturer guarantees, guarantees, the success of that product simply because his image or the image of the company is engraved or placed on that product. In the same way that God guaranteed that man has a different kind of function and authority amongst all of the creation. And God formed man in the dust of the ground and breathed into his nose the breath of life. And man became a living soul. It also talks about the three-dimensional part of na- ng tao. Spirit, soul, and body. Kahit mahal natin ang aso natin, pusa natin, but in essence, tayo lang ho ang binigyan ng Lord ng spirito. That's why man is the only creature who can communicate to God. Thus, the image of God is very important. 
So if you would look at this, this is very a very important verse, Genesis chapter 15, verse 17. And he said, no? And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden and to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. You could see the right and responsibilities of life, liberty, and property in this verse alone. Of course, there are thousands of verses that we could see. But dito pa lamang makita natin, man was created in the image of God. He has an intrinsic value. He has human dignity. And he has the right to life. And not only that, Man was given an assignment with a purpose from God and God even gave him the choice. Diba? Whether ikaw ay Calvinist or Arminian, one thing that we cannot negate, now whether you believe in God's sovereign, sovereignty, that God in His sovereignty expects us to choose correctly. Wag kayo magugulo. Let the unknown things be for the Lord. But for us, we choose, we were, were always given the opportunity to choose life or death. Amen. So, but alongside with that, God giving us the responsibility to make the right choice, He also prescribed laws and rules to define the limits and protection of our liberty. Pwede mong kainin na lahat, wag lang ito. And, Property, what else can we say? God gave man the responsibility of resources as steward. He was expected to manage well. Okay? Makita po natin yan. So, there, God actually, when it comes to man, God is an investor. Because God did not only gave us rights, but He also gave us responsibilities. God gave something from man, Expect something from him as a manager and a, as the masterpiece of his creation. Centerpiece, masterpiece ng creation ng Panginoon. Handiwork ng Panginoon. So in the responsibility of life, look at this, brothers and sisters, he gave us life in his image and expects in return for us to use it to display his image and glory. He gave us choices and gave us a purpose and His will and His law, and He expects us to trust and obey and discover His plans in our lives. Sino naniniwala na may plano ang Diyos sa buhay niya? Walang tao ang walang plano sa kanyang, walang plano ang Diyos sa kanyang buhay. And thirdly, God gave us resources, giftings, and even faculties, isip mo, lakas mo, walang tao ang ginawa ng Diyos para maging pabigat. And He placed us to be stewards. And He expects us to be fruitful, multiply, fill, and replenish the earth. That's an expectation and that would be part of God's accounting. Remember, God is the source of life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And even property. Later on, we'll be talking about more about Frederick Bastiat. He said, Man can live and satisfy his wants only by ceaseless labor, by the ceaseless application of his faculties to natural resources. This process is the origin of property. Ibig sabihin, meron ka nakitang lupang nakatiwangwang, binongkal mo, tinubigan mo. Then society now recognizes that you have what a right over that property, over that thing. Because the Lord is starting to bless you. Property came from the understanding of what? Stewardship. Later on, we'll learn more about Locke on property lights. Sabi ni John Locke, God would not have made us bodily would not, would uh, would not have made us with bodily needs if He didn't want us to satisfy them. So it is not God's will that we starve to death. So God must intend us to appropriate from the common goods 
for our own private use, God favors private property. Hindi ho favor ng Lord ang panggugulang, pandaraya, but nonetheless, when we talk about property rights, you cannot separate that in the Christian concept of stewardship. So marami akong pera. Bakit mo gusto maraming pera? Para sikat ako. Pero sa isang mananampalataya, sa isang tao who has been, who has been captivated by God, you know that these things, is an, these things that you have, your labor is an extension of your calling. And this has been the understanding of Christians who created and called these principles together. Hindi ho yan ginawa, gawa lamang. And later, makikita po natin, every man has a property in his own person. This nobody has any, any right to, to but himself, the labor of his body and the work of his hands, may, we may say, are properly his. The great and chief thereof of men's uniting into commonwealths and putting themselves under government is the preservation of their property. Property, when you begin to take care of God's Creation. <laughs> Amen po ba? Even property rights were established. Saan? Sa Ten Commandments. Makikita po natin. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's wife, man servant, ma- man servant, maid servant, etc. Can you steal if that thing does not belong or if that person has no property rights over the thing? Hindi pwede. So, you could see that even in the commandments of God, God protects property. But Christian property is the principle of stewardship. As stewards, we have to understand that God owns everything, that we are responsible, that God will make an accounting, and that He rewards us when we are faithful. Amen. And we could remember the parable of the talents. This also establishes property. May binigyan ng isa, may binigyan ng dalawa, may binigyan ng lima. Tama po ba? Isa, dalawa, at lima. And what happened? We remember that, though, that the person who was given one buried it. <laughs> so nagalit si Lord. Sinabi niya doon sa gumawa at pinalawak ang kanyang ari-arian Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. That's always our approach towards property rights. Hindi pwede na accumulation ka lang, and then you think, oh, the goal of being, of being wealthy is to create surplus. I, I've heard a lot of even Christian economists talk about it. But, you know, the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply And after multiplying, you do not what? You do not keep the multiplying, but you replenish the earth. You fill it. You use it and appropriate it for better use. Hindi mo itinatambak hambang ang iba ay nagugutom at nahihirapan. Because it is God who water, it is God who makes it grow. We can only water things, but He can grow it when He rewards us. And there is also a punishment for mishandling property. We know, sinabi niya, take the bags of gold and sinabi niya, no? uh, away from me, you lazy and wicked servants. So mishandling property leads to judgment. Okay. So there is now a responsibility for each one of us for a, to, give, to, to pursue a return. Dapat pakitain natin si Lord sa ating mga buhay. Ano ipikitain? Ibig sabihin, magaling ka kumanta doon, gamitin mo yung pag-awit mo. Magaling ka sumulat ng kata, start writing songs. You have the gift of teaching, start teaching. Amen. Because this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, proving to be my disciples. Disciples are fruitful. Genesis 1.28, be fruitful and multiply. Hindi ho na to decrease, but to increase, to multiply. That's property. What more can uh, could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it when I look for good grapes? Why did it yield only bad? So that is the expectation of God always. 
He expects a return. So tayo po ay investment ng Diyos dito sa lupa. So now, just just uh, laying down the understanding that life, liberty, and property actually is replete in the Word of God. Makita po natin. At hindi po ito yung sasabihin natin overproduction so that people, you know, that you will gain advantage at ikaw ay pagsasamantalahan mo ang iba. No, that is the work of the sinful nature in man. That's not the work of any system. That's the work of the sinful nature in man. Now, ito na. Historical development of the concept of natural rights and social contract. Bakit ho natural rights? Because the natural rights is what they, we now know as the right to life, liberty, and property. Okay? So, a little bit of background. No? Bagamat na sa salita ng Diyos po ito, yung mga konsepto na yan, but Christians began to articulate this right to life, liberty, and property against the background of this absolutism. Okay? So what is the absolutism? So during the 15th and 17th hundreds, when European monarchs established absolute rule over their domains, absolute rulers typically centralized all of their powers and they had an impact on culture in their respective nations and they believed that they held divine rights, meaning that their power was given to, to, uh, to them by God. Okay, sabi mo, hindi tama naman yan na pastor niya because Romans 13, di ba? All authorities are ordained by God. Yes, that's correct. However, the doctrine of divine theory, a uh, divine right theory, ang paniniwala po ng mga monarchs talaga na sila po ay tagapagmana ng trono ni David, lalo na the Anglo-Saxons. They believe that they descended, their thrones were descended from God so that God created the state and God given those with royal birth divine power to rule. Now, this is different from uh, the practice of the Egyptians and the other rulers that does not only believe that they were given God, by God the right to rule, but they believe that they descended from the gods. Okay? But when, the, when Christendom come, came, Christendom then understood na hindi sila ang Diyos, but understood that they are only as good as God would recognize them. Kaya nga po sila'y binabasbasa ng Papa kung gusto po nilang ma-legitimize during that time when the Christendom was in order. However, to disobey the divine right of the kings was considered both treason and moral sin. So, however, there is a saying that Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. The, par- the problem with this model is that monarchs and kings are men, are fallen people. An example is, uh, in the late 17th, 18th centuries, kings such as Louis the Fourteenth of France continue to profit from the divine right theory, even though many of them no longer had any truly religious belief in it. Ibig sabihin, they no longer sought to uh, fulfill their calling as kings, like David, to have a heart after God, but they started to abuse their power. Absolute corruption. So kings and monarchs started to use their divine rights no longer to rule uprightly but to benefit themselves, and this resulted to the perversion of the crown. This is as what God warned the nation of Israel in 1 Samuel chapter 8. Now listen to them, says the Lord, no? but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. So remember the story. No? So Israel, Israel was demanding for a king. Sabi nila kay Samuel, Give us a king so that we could have a king like the other country, other nations. So Samuel went to God and, and, and said, Gusto ko nila ng hari. Sabi ng Diyos, hindi sila satisfied sa akin, but tell them this. And you, you could now see the, the framework of absolute power being concentrated to 
one person. And God was actually telling it. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as their rights. Sabi, Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking for, uh, for a king. He said, this is what the king uh, who will reign over you will claim as his right. He will take your sons and make them serve his uh, chariots and horses and they will run in front of his chariot. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow uh, his, his ground and reap his harvest. And still others will make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be, perfu- uh, to, to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. Redistribution of wealth. Your male and female servants and your best of your cattle and donkeys, he will take for his own use. He will take a tenth of your flocks, tithing, taxes, and you yourselves will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. Okay. So, centuries after, thousands, thousands of years after, ayun nga, nag na yung mga tao because of the corruption of the monarchs. That's why they have what they call the Enlightenment period. No, The Protestant Reformation we've discussed last time. Now, the Protestant Reformation, as I did mention before, the opening of the Bible did not counsel scientific studies. It actually gave way to the understanding of nature. Kaya mali ho yung sinasabi ng ating pananampalataya ay laban sa rationality and laban sa siyensya. And the enlightenment came in. Now, many of Many Christians would tend to demonize these periods. Of course, there were people who went off the rails. But there are many Christians who understood the power of renewing your mind, understanding nature and comparing it with the Word of God, and also understanding reason, having a rational faith at the same time. So... The Enlightenment grew out of the Renaissance, Reformation, and Scientific Revolution, who are the who is the number one uh, lead scientist then? Newton, right? Isaac Newton, who is again a devout Christian and a, even a contender of the faith. He wrote some papers on his faith. So what's what's the same? Like all of these movements, much enlightenment thinking challenge accepted beliefs. Yung kanilang mga hari, yung kanila pong mga uh, religious orders. But the Enlightenment philosophers wanted to use ideas and reason of the scientific revolution for problems in government and society. Ito na po, no? Government and society. So now, because of this absolutism and divine right, pasok na ho itong mga, again, these are Christians, who began to explore this concept of the social contract theory. Na ang kapangyarihan ay hindi lamang po nagiging imbudo, it, it funnels to the king, but it each and everyone is responsible to create and build society. Okay? So the social contract theory, according to the Internet uh, Encyclopedia on Philosophy, they said, Social contract theory, nearly as old as philosophy itself, is the view that persons' moral and political obligations are dependent upon a contract or agreement among them to form the society which they live. Remember, maalala po ninyo, we talked about the covenantal thinking of the reformers. They created and built communities because of their understanding and relationship with one another. They create these federal communities. Naalala po ninyo yun. For those who um, um, heard the last teaching, 
So, that's the reason why it is also believed to be also a precursor of this uh, social contact theory where two or three are gathered in my name, they are in the midst of them. Mag-usap-usap tayo. Kaya ang ngayon, up till now, you could see this concept even alive in establishing communities and congregations. This social contact theory also became the basis for the creation of towns in the new world. Doon po sa Estados Unidos. Now, needless to say, the creation of the, gover- the, the creation of government now requires the consent because of the consent of the people. Now, this guy is um, Thomas Hobbes. No? Siya po yung unang-unang masasabi natin. A philosopher who talked about the social contact theory and he wrote a very important book during his time. Ang sinulat po niya, The Leviathan. You know the Leviathan? It's in the Bible. Si Job, kinuwento niya yan. Psalms talked about the Leviathan. It talked about, it's sort of a dragon-like <laughs> creature that was so strong. Overpowers everything. So Hobbes wanted to talk about social contract but he was defending the absolutist. Ibig sabihin, he was defending the crown. And he was saying na merong karapatan ng mga hari, hindi dahil sa divine right, pero because of a social contact theory. And what did he mean? Sinabi niya, the theory is that human life in its original state, ito po yung state of nature na tinatawag, without government was solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. He had a very, very pessimistic view of life without government. Unable to rule themselves, men voluntarily surrender their freedom to a ruler. Ruler was obliged to use absolute power to maintain order. And the subjects were obliged to accept his authority. Ibig sabihin, ang analysis niya is, the only alternative to anarchy is an absolute power or monarchy. Ito po yan, meron ako nakitang picture of some of the drawings of the Leviathan. You see the, the, the picture on the left? That is how they depicted the, Le- the Leviathan. Ano? On the right is a picture of the king looking like a Leviathan that has the power to overpower everyone. <laughs> pala, kaya pala Leviathan na tinatawag because that book talked about the necessity for a sovereign king in order to put things in order. So, in the book, Hobbes argued that the absolute power of kings is not just by divine right, but was necessary... I'm sorry. Um, can, can we ask... Uh, Somebody is uh, messing up with the Zoom. <laughs> okay. Baka hindi ho nila. Important. Okay. Okay. So, Hobbes argued that the absolute power of king is not just by divine right, but was actually necessary. King's absolute power is by consent through a social contract with the governed who agrees to obey in all matters so peace and security can be attained. And this, the, the Leviathan is taken from Job chapter 41. When God spoke to Job and said, nung nagririklamo si Job, no? Sabi niya, can you pull in Leviathan with a fish hook or tie down his tongue with a rope? Any hope of subduing it is false. The mere sight of it is overpowering. Nothing on earth is its equal, a creature without fear, it looks down on all that are haughty, it is king over all that are, that are proud. You have to understand that Hobbes is actually a Christian. He's a devout, devout believer. But he understood that sinful nature, left unchecked, would simply destroy society. 
Kaya ang sol- solusyon niya, magkaroon ka ng superpower, magkaroon ka ng diktador. Because only having a Leviathan around who is to police everyone, can we maintain law and order in society? Now, now on the opposite side of the fence is another social a person who is an expert in social contract. Pero iba ang kanyang take. This is Jean Jacques Rousseau. No? He was born in Geneva, Switzerland, but later on moved to France. Is convinced people are the same kind are good. Balikta do, yung kanina, bad. No? Siya, good, only society and a few bad people corrupted these good people. So he still believed in a social contract. Naniniwala siya by consent, but people should have as much individual free freedom as possible. But this is, this is the only thing sa kanya. He believed that governments can be formed through the permission of the people and a direct democracy where everyone equal and has equal say in politics. In essence, this is one of the contribution of this guy. We call him JJ, kasi Jean Jacques Rousseau, si JJ, is the concept of general will. Okay? General will only comes from people who are free and equal under law. This general will becomes moral, the moral force of the society. It decides what is right and what is wrong. This moral force should always work for the common good. Sinasabi ni Jean Jacques Rousseau, general will is always right. It is always right. Now, there is a problem when you talk about the majority is always correct because it's not always correct. It's not always right. And now we have what we call democracy, majority rules. And sometimes if majority rules, the minority is disenfranchised. Sila ay naiipit. And uh, we could even see, even in the Word of God, that, you know, wide is the road that leads to destruction, but narrow is the road that leads to life. But Jean Jacques Rousseau was advocating for a social contract and the government should serve the will of the majority. Not of all, because the will of the majority is what is good for all. Tandaan po niya, no? So in a way, ito po yung nagiging precursor ng justification. Democracy is the highest good. But this person comes in. Neither on the neither and from the extreme right nor from the extreme left but still a social contractist this is john locke no john locke is a revered thinker in england and a devout servant of god and a student of the bible okay he is an english philosopher a physician oh my doctor mga doctor po tayo dito widely regarded as one of the most influential of Enlightenment thinkers and commonly known as the father of the liberas- liberalism word. Natural rights, he thought about the natural rights of men, the life, liberty, and property. Which consequently talked about the limited government, which the limited powers of kings. And he talked about social contract and he is a champion of religious toleration, religious rights. And he had terrific um, articles and writings on education, which started sulat-sulatan lang doon sa kaibigan niya, but eventually, all of his letters was compiled into becoming a book, which up till now, many of us are still benefiting from the ideas that John Locke taught. Not only in government, but also in education. But more than that, he also wrote a lot of theological books. Now, this is what John Locke is all about. No? According, to, according to him, in his two treaties of government, human beings have this inalienable rights or yung natural rights as they are created by God and have reason and conscience to guide them in knowing right from wrong. Now, you have to understand, when we talk about uh, John Locke, John Locke is all about the person's intrinsic value. And government creates a system around 
the protection of that intrinsic value of man. So the duty of the state is to protect the natural rights of individual liberty, private property, and life. No? He also challenged the idea that a monarchy could dictate laws to citizens. Citizens have the natural right to form social contracts for themselves and should not have laws imposed upon them. You know, magkaibaho sila ni JJ, ni John Jacques Rousseau, in a way because Rousseau says, pagka sinuko ko ang aking will sa general will ng tao, wala na akong karapatan na questionin ang kanilang desisyon. Doon sa kabila naman, kung anong iutos ng ahari, wala na tayong karapat ng questioning because we agreed to give over all of our rights to them. But John Locke is quite, in a way, he was saying, na no, the only reason that I'm giving consent to them is for them to protect my individual rights. But when they start to step out of bounds and take away my rights, then the legitimacy of their actions begins to lose its authority. Okay? And ito yung sinabi niya. In, in, uh, in his book, he, I've just got a, a small portion. Sabi niya, For men being all the workmanship of one omnipotent and infinitely wise maker, all the servants of the sovereign master sent into the world by his order and about his business. They are his property, whose workmanship they are made to last during his, not, another, not one another's pleasure. Ibig sabihin, tayo daw, who has, exercise, who has the right to life, to liberty, and property, we ourselves are properties of our Creator. So we do not belong to anyone, but we belong to give pleasure to our Creator. Yun ang kanyang mindset. Galing, no? So that's what he was saying. Man belongs to God. Ang Diyos ang may-ari sa atin. Hindi tayo pagmamay-ari ng kahit nino. Some of his works, revolutionary works of Locke, the essay concerning human understanding, he wrote extensively in human psychology. He talked about the tabula rasa, he talked about treaties of government, the first and second, ito na nga, yung limited government and the, the natural rights. He talked about concerning toleration, religious freedom. He is, his works until now are being used. Some of his thoughts concerning education and the reasonableness of Christianity as delivered in the scripture. You see, they say that these people, Locke and all of these people are, you know, godless Mali pala. Because they want to paint these champions of faith as you know, anti-God. So this, the, the, of course, they're, it's, it's not, they're not on the same plane or dimension, but you could see that these three, of course, meron pang iba, but they are the three leading feature or, or uh, persona, personalities and philosophes of the social contract theory. The um, consent by the people to be governed. So just quickly, let's, let's just... Uh, nandiyan pa ho ba kayo? Okay? Let's quickly uh, compare ulit po, no? As to human nature, Hobbes, people, be- he believes that men are inherently evil and need to be protected from themselves with a government. However, si Locke naman, he believes that people are, inher- are good but corrupted. Rousseau also, life is purest in nature and civilized man is corrupted and unequal. Doon tayo sa social contract. No? People give up some of their rights for government, for protection of order. Pero si Locke naman, government offers services and protection, but the people have the right to change it if government does not serve the people. Revolutionary thought again. That was... Sabi mo, tanggalin mo yun, tanggalin mo hari, nako, delikado. Social contract, si Rousseau naman, social contract is between people, not the government. And it gives up 
it's rights to the general will. So, hindi lang isa ang hari, ang sovereign. Ang sovereign is the majority. So, the role of the state, prevent chaos. Sabi ni Hobbes, role of the state for uh, uh, lock, protect person's natural rights, life, liberty, and property. And for Rousseau, the state serves the general will. Makita ho natin. Ngayon ho, siguro naisip nyo na, some of the laws that we have, some of the policies we have, ay ito pala, Rousseauan, ito pala, lock. Ito pala ay halo na rin. So, doon na tayo sa best type of government. Of course, um, Hobbes, sinasabi, hindi, monarchy. Sabi naman ni <laughs> lock, representative government or republic. Constitutional monarchy. This is, and yung isa naman, dictatorship reflecting the general will. So, ito lang yung summary. Of course, Hobbes talks about aristocracy, monopoly, and abuse by the elite. Lack is republicanism, meaning representative government. Kagaya ni Moses. No? Government is not absolutely, government cannot step outside, out of bounds, but government is controlled and limited protection of civil liberties, free market and capital could lead, some, but ito nga yung sinasabi, could lead to overproduction. But Rousseau is democratic. Rule of the many or rule of the ma believes that majority is always right. It could result to the oppression of the minority and oftentimes it results to the pursuance of social justice and even redistribution of wealth. Okay, dito na po tayo. So, these thoughts now greatly influenced the American and French Revolution and the eventual adoption of the inalienable and natural rights. Tandaan ho natin dun sa last lesson natin last week ay pinag-aralan ho natin how the U.S. Revolution affected the Philippine reformers. Okay? At marami ho sa mga batas that was called during the time we now have with us so, wag ho kayong ma-offend, but binabalikan na naman natin to, Kasi yun ho ang mga batas na meron ho tayo ngayon. And we have to understand, because when we look at it at, through the lens of God's providence, we will see that the, God is re, has really been leading the Philippines towards His will. So, the U.S. freedoms, amongst those three, the U.S. freedoms shows primarily the ideas of John Locke. Okay? Amongst the philosophers of the principal social contract, the U.S. forefathers subscribed with the ideas set forth by John Locke. The Lockean principles would first influence the states, the malilita states, and eventually the entire U.S. through the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. It is often, he is often credited as the founder of modern liberal, liberal thought. The U.S. will put this biblical concepts to work. Nandiyan pa ho ba kayo? Nakikita ho natin. Eventually, ito'y kanilang ginamit. Sa una hong ginamit, the Virginia Declaration of Rights of 1776. Si, ito po si George Mason na nakita po ninyo. Siya ang nag-establish nung yung Virginia Declaration. Wala pang US Declaration. Um, quick background lang tayo. Ano po? Meron tayong mga kasama dito na Mga Amerikano, no? sila, <laughs> Kuya Ferdy, sila, <laughs> Pastor James. But, you have to understand that for 150 years, nung dumating ho ang mga pilgrims sa Massachusetts, for 150 years, uh, you know, the, the North America was still considered as part of the New England. Colony, colony, colony po sila. Okay? 13 colonies po sila. So, nung sila po'y nakaka-problema na because they were being taxed without representation and all of the other abuses, they wanted now to bolt out. But it it happened, bolt away pala, bolt away from the the, the, the crown of the king of Spain, oh, sorry, of uh, England. Pero unti-unti ho ito nangyari. Marami hong diskarte, marami hong usapan. And Virginia was able to come up with this Declaration of Rights in 1776. Few years before the Declaration of Independence. Ah, sorry. 
a month before the Declaration of Independence. Sinabi niya, the primarily George Mason established inherent rights of men which included the right to reform or abolish inadequate government. It influenced a number of, of latter documents including the U.S. Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. The Declaration represented the first protection of individual human rights under the state constitution in the colonies and foreshadowed what later on became the First Amendment ng Constitution and the Bill of Rights. So yan po, no? Doon sa section 1, makita natin, sinabi na niya doon. Sa Virginia Declaration of Rights, all men by nature equally free and independent and have served certain inherent rights of which when, when they enter into a, state, uh, into a state of society, they cannot by a competent, deprive or divest their posterity. Namely, the enjoyment of life, liberty, and the means of acquiring, possessing property. And pursuing and obtaining happiness and safety. Sinabi niya, hindi pwedeng kunin sa amin ang aming inalienable rights to life, liberty, and property. Because hindi rin naman sa amin binigay ito. So, a month later, Thomas Jefferson, who is the more popular person, Actually, he was the, I think, I believe, no, if I'm not mistaken, he was the third president of the United States after John Adams. So, he now, <laughs> referring to that same document, sinulat niya itong U.S. Declaration of Independence, consistent with the Lakyan idea. At ang sinabi ho niya doon, life, liberty, medyo binago niya ng konti, Tinanggal niya yung property, sinabar niya pursuit of happiness na nandun naman sa Virginia document. Pero pursuit of happiness includes, according to his conception, property. Because the property is there so that you can be sustained in your life. Pursuit of happiness was used rather than the original work of luck in property. So the U.S. Declaration of Dependence was made Alunan ko na po siya. And this is the Declaration of Independence. Isa sa pinakamagandang dokumento na pwede ho ninyo mabasa. And it talks concisely about the principles of inalienable rights of life, liberty, and property. And sabi ho dito, we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Typographical error daw po yan nung gumawa. Inalienable rights. No? That amongst, among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Sounds familiar? Yes. Because again, this is a um, legacy of Christian scholars studied the word and understood that these principles are given, these rights are given by God. Sabi niya, kaya gumagawa ng gobyerno para protektahan ang individual rights at freedoms. Noong una hong ginawa ang U.S. Constitution, wala hong statement about life, liberty, and property. But there was an amendment, the Fifth Amendment, they now place it there, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. We now have this provision in our Philippine Constitution, in all of our Philippine Constitution, except the Malolos Constitution. Mamaya, makikita po natin. Sa lahat ng mga Constitution, since the Americans came, we now carry these provisions in our Bill of Rights. Kaya ho kayo, kapag hinuli ho kayo ng polis, hinuli ho kayo ng otoridad, nang hin- at kinulong ka ng walang kaabog-abog, ay hindi ho pwedeng gawin yan nang wala hong dumadaan sa proseso ng batas. Is that correct? Things and properties cannot be taken away from you without just compensation and without going through due process of law. It's because of this idea of inalienable and natural rights. Inalienable rights are rights 
that were not given to you by man, that were not given to you by government, nor the government can take it away from you. Because it is God given. Katulad ang buhay po natin, hindi ho gobyerno ang nagbigay sa atin. The PSA could register us, but the PSA cannot create a person by simply coming up with a birth certificate. Amen. Sabi, hindi ba pwede? Ha? Pwede. So this concept even went further from John Locke's ideas. It inspired the revolution and it now inspired the French Revolution. Ito po yun. France Declaration of Rights of Men in 1789. Pero ito medyo weird ng konti, no? Kasi ho, alam nyo naman po, when you look at how France created it, hindi lang ho siya lakyan, pero nahaluan ho ng Rousseau. Si Rousseau is what? General will, remember? The idea of general will. And lock is what? Inalienable rights of man. Limited government. Okay? Tingnan ko nga ho kung uh, madidetect ninyo, no? Let's uh, do some practice. Spotting lock and JJ in the articles. First, Men are born and remain free and equal in rights. Social distinctions may be found only upon general good. Is it from Locke or is it from Rousseau? The first part is Locke. <laughs> the second part could be Rousseau. Second, the aim of all political association is the preservation of the natural and imprescriptible rights of man. Okay, sino? Locke again, right? Natututo na tayo. Pwede nang mag-exam. These rights are liberty, property, security, and resistance to oppression. Okay. Number three, the principle of all sovereignty resides essentially in the nation. Nobody nor individual may exercise any authority which does not proceed directly from the nation. Oh, siguro pareho yan. Social contract concept. Number four, liberty consists in the freedom to do everything which injures no one else. That is not a Lockean understanding. That is definitely a JJ. Because remember, freedom according to Locke is understanding that you are owned and possessed by God. So if that thing does not glorify God, that is not the proper exercise of freedom. Makita ho natin, eventually later, Freedom is not being able to do what you want, but being able to do what you should. Tama po. Hindi mo gagawin yung gusto mo lang, pero yung gusto mo minsan, hindi mo naman dapat ginagawa. So sometimes you are free to do what you want, but you are not free to want what you should. So we are what? Captive by our sinful nature. Okay? So that's not how you pursue happiness. Nobody nor individual may exercise any authority which does not proceed directly from the nation. Sorry. Um, nasa na ba ako? Okay. Liberty consists in the freedom to do anything, blah, 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 blah. Sorry. Hence, the exercise of natural rights of each man has no limits except those which assure to them, uh, to the other members of society, the enjoyment of the same rights. These limits can only be determined by law. Majority rule again. So that is what? A JJ. Okay? Number five, law can only prohibit such actions as are hurtful to society. Okay? Nothing may prevent, uh, nothing may be prevented which is not forbidden by law. And no one may be forced to do anything not provided for by law. That is a JJ again. Law is the expression of the general will. Sino yan? Okay. Every citizen has the right to participate personally or through his representatives in its foundation. Ayan, lock yan. Representative government. It must be the same for all, whether it protects or punishes. All citizens being equal in the eyes of law are equally eligible to all dignities and to all public positions and occupations according to their abilities, which without distinctions, except that of their virtues and talents. That is... Uh, both, no? Both for them. 
JJ and a lock Yuri. Okay, hindi ko na inilagay lahat just to show you you know how it influenced the French Revolution. Mabahaba na. Natin basahin to. <laughs> now, I would now go to my hero who is again a French a French thinker. You know, for me, it's uh, Frederick Bastiat reading his book that really led me to understand more. And, and uh, to look into this topic more. No? So, sino ba si Frederick Bastiat? No? Frederick Bastiat, in full, which is Claude Frederick Bastiat, born in uh, June 30, 1801, and died in 1850, Uh, he's a French economist best known for his journalistic writing in favor of free trade and economics of Adam Smith. No, hindi ho natin madidiscuss si Adam Smith ngayon. During the revolutionary years of 1848 to 49, he wrote against the rise of socialism, which he identified with protectionism. It was primarily his campaign against socialism and communism that won him a seat in the Constituent Assembly in, in 1849 and in the subsequent Legislative Assembly of the same year. Economic theorist Joseph Schumpeter, Schumpeter called Bastiat the most brilliant economic journalist who ever lived. Now, I, I would understand bakit nasabi yun because if you read his writings, may iksi pero siksik and subukan ko hong ipakita yung ilan po sa atin. So he, he was also influenced by the Lacan um, understanding and thinking. But he just explained it in a such a clear and noble way. Sabi rin niya, each of us has the natural right from God to defend his person, his liberty, and his property. So this book, no, if you have an access to this book, go get yourself. Meron na pong uh, English translation. So he was talking about the law. What's the purpose of the law? The law is justice. In its proposition, a simple and enduring government can be conceived. And I defy anyone who say, how even uh, um, the thought of revolution, of insurrection, of the slightest uprising could arise against a government whose organized force was confined only to suppressing justice. He was saying here that the only purpose of the law is to suppress injustice. And what is injustice? It is the oppression of your individual rights. Yan ang sinasabi niya. Yun ang purpose ng gobyerno, yun ang purpose ng batas. Ang batas is a force against injustice. Yan ang sinasabi niya. And, I, um, kinuha ko po yung unang pasok po ng libro. <laughs> so, just to, uh, for us to read. Ano? Uh, can we read together? One, two, three, Uh, dito sa sayo, we hold from God. Okay, one, two, three, read. We hold from God the gift of which includes all others. This gift is life, physical, intellectual, and moral life. But life cannot min- maintain itself alone. The creator of life has entrusted us with the responsibility of preserving, developing, and perfecting it. In order that we may accomplish this, He has provided us with a collection of marvelous faculties and He has put us in the midst of a variety of natural resources. By the application of our faculties to these natural resources, we convert them into products and use them. The process is necessary in order that life may run its appointed course. Life, faculties, production, in other words, individuality, liberty, property. This is man. And in spite of the cunning and artful political leaders, these three gifts from God precede all human legislation and are superior to it. Life, liberty, and property do not exist because men have made laws. On the contrary, it was the fact that life, liberty, and property existed beforehand that caused men to make laws in the first place. Grabe, no? Ang iksi niya, pero... Ando na lahat. 
And I would just um, share to you some of the <laughs> wonderful things that he said, still say. No, okay. So from that short paragraph, no? Sinabi niya, we hold uh, from, sabi niya, we hold from God the gift which includes all others, the gift of life, physical, intellectual, and moral life. So first, in establish niya that life is from God. Second, life cannot maintain itself alone. Kung binigyan ka ng just ng buhay, kinakailangan niyang isustain ang buhay mo. And in order for you to be sustained, the creator of life has entrusted us with a responsibility of preserving, developing, and perfecting it. Now, the reason why I love this, because it's shied away from what? From the concept of rights. It's now talking about responsibility. Responsibilidad mo na pakainin ang sarili mo. Responsibilidad mo na i-develop ang sarili mo. And it's your responsibility to become what God has called you to be. Ganda. Kasi pag, pagka rights, may rights ka, okay. But I'm not responsible to do anything. I, you know, if I could destroy my life if I want, to all you care, to all you care, di ba? This is my life. But he said, in order for you to achieve what God has called you, life cannot maintain itself alone. The creator of life has entrusted us with the responsibility, eh, sorry, number three, by the application of these faculties, anong faculties? Yung isip natin, yung katawan natin, to these natural resources, we convert them into products and use them. Same thing, simple explanation. You have your faculties. You have your ideas, right? You have your strength. And what do you do? You begin to work for somebody else. Nagtrabaho ka, nagnegosyo ka. Then your labor becomes your property. Nakakita ka ng isang puno or ng log na nakatiwangwang, kinuha mo yung log, pinutol mo at ginawa mong isang Bahay, yung bahay na yan, sa'yo yan. Because your faculties, combined with the natural resources, created property. So the government now, the society would now recognize that and protect your right over that property. By the application, sorry, life, faculties, production. In other words, individuality, liberty, property, this is man. Yan ka. Pag tinanggalan ka ng buhay, wala ka. Pag tinanggalan ka ng liberty, wala ka. Pag kinuha sa'yo ang mga in-trust sa'yo ng Panginoon, paano ka mabubuhay? Paano mo magagawa ang layunin ng Diyos sa buhay mo? So that is man. So you could see that these three things are interconnected. They are woven in one, you know, neat bond. You cannot destroy one without destroying the other. Life, liberty, and property do not exist because man have made laws. On the contrary, it was the fact that life, liberty, and property existed beforehand that caused men to make laws in the first place. Hindi ko naman kailangan ng batas eh. Maliban na lamang, kailangan ko kong protektahan ng life, liberty, and property ko. So this is his explanation. Now going to, to him again, what do, does Bastiat mean when he talks about the law? What then is law? Ewan ko, if, can you still read it? Okay, let's read. One, two, three. What then is law? It is the collective organization of the individual rights to lawful defense. Each of us has a natural right from God to defend his person, his liberty, and his property. These are the three basic requirements of life, and the preservation of any of them is completely dependent upon the preservation of the other two. For what are faculties but the extension of our individuality? And what is property but an extension of our faculties? If every person has the right to defend, even by force, his person, his life, his liberty, and his property, then it follows that a group of men have the right to organize and support a common force to protect these rights constantly. Thus, the principle of collective right, its reason for existing, its lawfulness is based on individual right. And the common force that protects this collective right cannot logically have any other purpose or any other mission 
than that for which it was uh, its act as a substitute. Ang galing na naman. Sana nga tayo nagsulat no pero hindi eh. Siya nagsulat eh. So what does he say? The law is a collection of your individual rights as consenting together so that we could have a formidable force to protect our individual rights. Sabi niya. Kaya nga, hindi mo ngayon pwedeng gamitin ang common force suddenly to destroy individual rights. Common force. I'll move on kasi baka ma-excite ako masyado sa isang slide. Okay. <laughs> Law as force for defense of individual rights. So, I, I just broke down no kanina. Law is the collective organization of individual right to lawful defense. These are the three basic requirements of life and the preservation of any one of them is completely dependent upon the preservation of the other of other two. Thus, the principle of collective right, its reason for existence is its lawfulness is based on individual rights. And the common force that protects this collective right cannot logically have any other purpose or any other mission that for which it's, it acts as a substitute. So he also said in some of other portions, hindi ko na linagay kasi matagal, ha? he also talked about the limitations on law and the limitations on the use of force. Sinabi niya, then the common force for the same reason cannot lawfully be used to destroy the person liberty, and property of individual or groups. Why? Because the reason why it's ex- ex- existing is because of the individual rights. And then, you cannot destroy the very reason that created you. Since no individual acting separately can lawfully use force to destroy the rights of others, does it not logically follow that the same principle also applies to the common force that is nothing more than the organized combination of individual forces? Okay? And finally, he said, if this is true, uh, basahin natin, one, two, three, read. If this is true, then nothing can be more evident than this. The law is the organization of the natural right of lawful defense. It is the substitution of a common force for individual force. And this common force is to do only what the individual force have a natural and lawful right to do, which is to protect persons, liberties, and properties, to maintain the right of each, and to cause justice to reign over us all. Ang ganda, Pastor, di paki-explain niya. It's really profound. And it makes sense. Diba? Bakit? We will go to the next slide. Naka three hours na ba ako? Di pa? So, pwede pa. <laughs> nag na si Pastor na magka-crash na yung ano natin. Alright. So, the proper role of government, he now says that every man has the right to defending, right of defending by even by force his person, right, liberty, and proper and the number of men have the right to combine themselves. Anyway, nothing therefore. Ito na yung kanina. So he also said, doon sa kanyang libro, everyone wants to live at the expense of the state. But they forget that the state wants to live at the expense of everyone. <laughs> Gusto natin lahat nakaasa tayo sa gobyerno, ang mga tao, kuha sa gobyerno ng mga dole outs, pero we fail to forget Kundi nga pala nagtatrabaho ang gobyerno. Ang trabaho ng gobyerno ay mamahala sa atin at kumuha ng komisyon sa ating mga kinikita. So kanino rin ho nakukuha yun? Sa atin din pala. And he was explaining this and it was, he was explaining as if it's, it's today. Government is the great fiction through which everybody endeavors to live at the expense of everybody, expense of everybody else. And now he introduced this idea of legal plunder. Plunder daw means taking somebody else's possession by force. No? Sabi niya, 
When plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men in society, over the course of time, they create for themselves a legal system that authorizes it in a moral code that glorifies it. Because legal plunder is something when the law is actually used to violate inalienable rights. Na yung inorganize mo na grupo para magprotekta ng individual rights ay masyadong lumakas ang loob at sila na ngayon ang nagbabiolate ng individual rights mo. Kuwari, pumunta ko kayo sa isang barangay, member ka na isang barangay at sinabi nun niyo sa community ninyo, merong nagnanakaw dito sa barangay natin, kumukuha ng mga manok, ng mga baka, ng mga itik. Gawin natin, total lahat tayo nawawalan, iano natin si paring uh, Jose. O paring Jose, ha? ikaw na ang uh, magiging uh, tagapagbantay natin. Sabi ni Jose, sandali, eh, nag-iisa ako, bigyan nyo naman ako ng kargada, bigyan nyo naman ako ng mga kasama. O sige, Lahat tayo, mag tayo, mag-contribute para hindi nawawala ang ating mga itik, ating mga manok, etc. Si pare nyo siya, sige, payag ako. I will now be taking care and ensuring that uh, walang, walang ukuha ng iyong mga properties. So binigyan nyo si pare nyo siya, binigyan nyo ng motor, binigyan nyo ng pangkape, binigyan nyo ng chaleko, <laughs> binigyan nyo ng trapal. And si Pari Jose, sinabi, may, kailangan ko ng dagdag pang mga ronda. So, nagdagdagan, o sige, o pang swelo, o sige, o basta ano yan, ha? And then, dumagdag yung pang ronda, kailangan ko ng pang batuta. O sige, okay naman. So, nung may batuta na lahat, sabi ni Pari Jose, eh, sandali. Ang laki na ng grupo ko dito, ha? May batuta kami lahat, sila wala. Eh, tayo nilang makuha ng itik dito, tayo nilang makuha ng... wala namang makakaangal dyan. Right? And then, kunin natin mga itik nila. At sabihin natin, kukunin namin at ibibigay na lang namin sa inyo kung anong nararapat. So, do you understand the logic? So, that is what Bastiat is saying. So, he even said the kinds of legal plunder. It's forcibly taking one's property in favor of another. He said this, Now, legal plunder can be committed in an infinite number of ways. Thus, we have an infinite number of plans for organizing it. Tariffs, protection, benefits, subsidies, <laughs> encouragements, progressive taxation, public schools, guaranteed jobs, guaranteed profits, minimum wage, the right to relief, a right to the tools of labor, free credit, and so on and so on. Lahat yan binasa natin. Sandali. Eh, lahat yan nasa batas namin eh. Tama po ba? Because it's a difference of understanding. And, and I'll tell you, I do not want to over-explain this because this will be part of part four and you have to be on part four when you talk about taxation, property, and um, welfare. No? Pero Bastiat also explained The theory of the unseen. Ibig sabihin, whenever somebody or the government takes something from you, or the organized group takes something from you, and they tell you, look, I took this from you, and we created something out of it. Sabi ni Basiat, okay, that's good. Pero you are not computing the value well. Bakit? Because kung hindi mo kinuha sa akin yan, yung hindi mo nakikita na baka meron din akong nagawa dun sa kinuha mo sa akin, Baka meron din ako papakita sa iyo. Look what I did with the money that you did not take from me. So the question now hap begins. The question now is not whether that resources that was taken from you whether ito ba ay may napupuntahan o wala. The question now is who has the better right of using or spending that thing or that money? Is it The one in government or is it the person who actually worked and earned it? Yun ang sinasabi niya. Sino ang merong mas karapatan? Hindi ko sinasabi na wag ho tayong magbayad ng buhos. Dapat ho, sinabi ho ng salita ng Diyos yan. But when it comes to become confiscatory and you now become shackled, then that is already an illegitimate exercise. And they, he now calls it false philanthropy. Hey, ito, patindi dito si Bakas Chat. He said, legal plunder has two roots. 
One, as we have just seen, is in human selfishness, and other is false philanthropy. If philanthropy is not voluntary, it destroys liberty and justice. The law can give nothing that is not first been taken from its owner. Anong false philanthropy? Pag-aaralin ko itong lahat, pero kukunin ko yan sa inyo naman. False philanthropy daw. Matindi ang ano niya. <laughs> Mga sinasabi niya, no? So it is impossible to introduce into society a greater change and a greater evil than this, the conversion of the law into an instrument of plunder. Pahapyawan ko lang, no? Alam niyo po, sa Pilipinas, we now have this income tax system, right? So income tax is a tax on the profit that you make, the income. Income is what all... Uh, all wealth that comes in. Kaya nga, income, come in. Right? Income. So, in a specific time, in a, in a taxable year, a wealth comes in. That wealth becomes an income because that wealth used to be not yours, pero kumita ka. So, nagkaroon ka ng income. So, that income now, the government now will take a cut because they are now protecting your right to receive your income. That's income tax, no? A kind of excise tax that protects your right to receive your income. So, kung ano may matitira sa'yo ngayon, <laughs> now you will now be ready to spend your money, right? Yung natira. But when you spend your money, you're now hit with what? Consumption tax, or what they call value-added tax. So yung income mo na na-tax na, gagastusin mo ngayon for the consumption, and they call it differently. They call it, no, this is a tax on the value that was added. Kaya value-added tax. Pero actually, it's consumption tax. Ibig sabihin, kung sino nagbabayad, sino bumibili, kahit hindi ka nagbayad ng income tax, babayad ka ng tax. So pag tinignan po po, kung ikaw ay nabawasan ng 30% in your income tax, and then plus 12% in the spending power of whatever is left, more or less, it's almost 50% ang natira sa'yo, pumunta sa gobyerno. You know what, does it, that, what that means? In every eight hours of work that you do, four hours you're working for the government. And that is what? Involuntary servitude sometimes, they would say. That's why taxes, ano involuntary servitude? Yun daw yung modern day na <laughs> slavery, they say. And kaya ho sa unang panahon, uh, itinataas ang taxes, nakakapugudan ng ulo ng hari. But the justification again is the JJ principle. That's, that's for the general will. And also, it's okay that we take this as long as we're putting it here and everybody look. Look, pero hindi nakita doon kung sino yung kumita, kung sino yung, di ba, doon sa project, may 30% sa ganito, may 20% sa ganyan because of that very same principle. Nakakabingin, nakakabingin katahimikan. Well, it's, it's the system and many of us, uh, it's okay with it before we understand what these Christian philosophers are, have been saying. So try to imagine a regulation of labor imposed, imposed by force that is not a violation of liberty. A transfer of wealth imposed by force, that is not a violation of property. If you cannot reconcile these contradictions, then you must conclude that the law cannot organize labor and industry without organizing injustice. <laughs> Grabe, no? Kunin namin yung pera ninyo para invest namin sa ibang lugar. Kunin namin yung pera. Diga, bakit? Ibang... I- I- Sinasabi ko sa mga estudyante ko nga ito, alam nyo, class, sabi ko nga sa kala, when I'm teaching constitutional law, say, you know, politics and economy are two different things. What feeds you and your family is economy. And you are economy. Ikaw yun. Ilan sa inyo, and during the past month or week or even years, pupunta ka sa city hall para pakainin mo yung anak mo. Wala. Pag wala kang makain, pupunta ka sa kapitbahay, pupunta ka sa pamilya sa magulang mo. 
Because it's the role of what? Because it's man who produces, man who innovates. Tao ang nag-iisip, tao ang gumagawa, tao ang nag-iimbento. Ang ginagawa ng gobyerno ay, it takes a cut. Tama po ba? It takes a cut. And now, aside from just taking a cut, you now begin to expand the interpretation and understanding what the government is so that the government can now run your life, can even go, even register your churches. And if you don't have the proper registration, they can makapagkasal. And all of those things. Kung di ka pwedeng ganito, hindi mo pwedeng gawin yan, hindi mo pwedeng buksan yan. So on and so forth with the idea that, well, it's the government. If the government says that, then it must be right and legitimate. So, the law has been used to destroy its own objective. It has been applied to annihilating a justice that was supposed to maintain to limiting and destroying rights, which is the real purpose, was to respect. The law has placed the collective force at the disposal of the unscrupulous who wish without risk to exploit the person's life, person's liberty, and property of others. That's why, kung kayo po, if you have plans to be in government, limit it. Make sure that your concept is limited government. Um, in some parts of his book, he even said that the normal reaction of a group who was oppressed by the privileged few is for them to want to be in the same position of the privileged so that they can propagate the same injustice that they receive. Tama. Tama nga nan. Alam mo, talagang itong congressman namin, itong mayor namin, talagang napakakurap, talagang ganito, ganyan. Pag ako naging mayor, kukunin ko lahat yan, pamimigay ko lahat yan sa tao. Eh, ganun pa rin. Di ba po? So it really takes godly men and people who would really understand to restrain themselves. Kaya ako, masaya ako sa trabaho ko dati eh sa gobyerno kasi pinuputol lang red tape, pinaputol lang excessive bureaucracy. And whenever I would, because I know these things already, but hindi ko naman mapaliwanag sa lahat na ganito ang sinabi ni, no, ni Locke, ni Bastiat, ganyan ito. But I'm happy because when you make things easier for people, people become freer to do what they want. So now, going to the last point. So what is now Freedom. What is now independence? Is national freedom already freedom for individuals of our country? Can an independent and free state have unliberated enslaved citizens? What happens if the state that no longer, uh, that long to be free from foreign powers like the Philippines becomes the new tyrant of the people? A nation is only as free as the individual freedom experienced by its people in their private lives. Sino nagbabayad ng amilyar sa lupa? Real property taxes? Okay? If you don't pay your real property taxes, what happens? Okay. So, renta yun. Sort of, you know, you're renting it. So, um, sabi ko nga, sana merong, ano, namang isang advocacy, tanggalin ng real property taxes. Okay ba yun? <laughs> Meron yata mga mayor dito. Kung watakbo kayo, gawin niya yan. Hindi, bawal. Nasa, nasa, ano yan, nasa local government code. Eh, sinabi, pwede mo mga ano. Baguhin natin. Now, as to the last point, this, this will be now faster, no? Contextualizing it the Philippines. So, titingnan nyo na ngayon. Ano bang meron tayo sa Pilipinas? Okay. So what is now the status of the right to life, liberty, property in the Philippines? Without going through all of the details, remember that the Philippine territory was discovered and during the last uh, topic that we talked about, discovery pala grants the discoverer, the European discoverer, a right over all of the properties. So tayo ay hindi talaga naging malaya sa atin hong sariling mga propriedad. The discovery of uh, Magellan and the installation of the encomienda system, which is the system of slavery, together with the Inqu Spanish Inquisition, etc. So, yan ho tayo sa mahabang panahon. 
That's how we were trained. And look at this. Have you heard about um, what our political scientist refers to? Patronage politics. Narinig niyo po ba yan? Naririnig natin yun, but, but, but do you really understand what patronage politics actually means? Now, this is my simplistic explanation po dyan. Patronage me came from the word patron. Ano yung patron? It means boss. Boss, hindi lang yung patron seat, yung mga boss system. So the boss now is able to get what he wants from his, uh, ano ba yan? From the person that he's dominating in exchange of his protection, but gagawin mo yung gusto ko. Diba? Bibigay ko sa inyo kailangan mo, akong bahala sa iyo. Familiar, di ba? Nako tao ako, bata ako ni ganyan. So siya bahala sa akin. Patron ko yan. He's my boss. So the boss system now, regardless kung ano yung uh, political platform, most of the time, pag sinasabi, hindi, ano yan, tao kami ni ganyan, bibigay yan sa amin, bibigay yan ng pera, magbibigay yan ng position, then we elect him in position we elect him in office because regardless and notwithstanding whatever his platform is or maybe wala siyang platform that what is important is kasama niya ako kami right so now politics now on the ground becomes how many people you know and how many people can you influence and not only that if you have the money how many ang mga taong iyong mabibigyan that's patronage politics Yun ho yung tinatawag, no? And it comes from the idea na ang mga Pilipino naghahanap pa rin ng boss. Okay lang, boss, if you, you know, take dominion of my time, take dominion of everything, I subscribe to you. And having that system is more appropriate for what Hobbes is saying. Diba si Hobbes? Kasi wala kayong control sa sarili ninyo, merong magdodominate sa inyo, mas mabuti pa. Tama naman. Doon sa respect na yon and later. So, when the Malolos Constitution came, which is the, the, the Constitution that yung mga ninuno natin mismo ang gumawa, no? So, practicing ulit natin yung spotting JJ pating uh, <laughs> luck and uh, maybe sama na natin si Hobbes. No? Sabi niya, Malolos Constitution, 1899, sabi niya, we the representatives of the Filipino people, remember, they are now bolting away from Spain, no? we the representatives, oh, representative, which is luck, no? of the Filipino people, lawfully convened in order to establish justice, provide for the common defense, Promote the general welfare. What is general welfare? JJ, no? General welfare. And ensure the benefits of liberty, imploring the aid of the sovereign legislator of the universe. Ganda, no? For the attainment of these ends, have voted decree and sanctioned the following. And then, sinabi niya yung kung yung mga statement. And ito naman, some important provisions of the Malolos Constitution. The political association of all Filipinos constitutes a nation who shall be known as the Philippine Republic. The Philippines is a free and independent. Okay? The Philippines. But remember, you're talking about the body politic. Sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. Okay. What is the social contract again? Alright? The government of the Republic is popular, representative, alternative, and responsible. And shall exercise three distinct powers, legislative, executive, and judiciary. Montesquieu na yan. Iba naman yun. Any two of or more of these three powers shall never, shall never be united in one person or cooperation, nor the legislative power vested in a single individual. Ano ho ang mapapansin nyo dun sa wala sa Article 4 na normally naririnig natin sa Pilipinas? Representative, popular, alternative? I'll go ahead. And later, you'll see. Now, let's now go to the preambles of the three during the American era. Okay? 35 Constitution. 
The Filipino people, imploring the aid, o oh, walang sovereign ha, kasi under tayo ng Amerika. The Filipino people imploring the aid of the divine providence in order to establish a government that shall embody the, embody the ideals, conserve and develop patrimony of the nation, promote the general welfare and secure the, for themselves the posterity and blessings of independence under the regime of justice, liberty and democracy. Do ordain and promulgate this constitution. Okay, you could see JJ there. You could see Locke again. We, the sovereign Filipino people, ito na, sovereign Filipino people, 73 constitution, imploring the aid of the divine province in order to establish a government that shall embody our ideals, promote the general welfare, conserve and develop the patrimony of our nation and secure to ourselves and our posterity the blessings of democracy under a regime of justice, peace, liberty, and equality do ordain to promulgate this constitution. And 87th constitution, we sovereign Filipino people imploring the aid of the Almighty God, the divine providence, in order to build a just and humane society and establish a government that shall embody our ideals, promote the common good, conserve and develop our patrimony, and secure to ourselves and our posterity the blessings of independence and democracy under the rule of law and a regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality, and peace, and do ordain, do ordain and promulgate this constitution. Did you know that in the U.S. Constitution, there is no mention of democracy? Yeah. It's republic. Republic. Because magkaibaho ulit ang republic, magkaibaho ang democracy. Sa Pilipinas, so, inagay ho natin. Okay. Anyway, so, wag ko nang basahin isa-isa. <laughs> But uh, all of them, nagkakaisa po sila that what? Uh, except for 1987, nakita ho natin, Section 1, the Philippines is a democratic and republican state. Okay? Sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. So makikita niyo po ngayon, it's the really the concept of majority rules. I'm sorry, no? Uh, balik lang ako dito. Kita nyo po ito, no? Dito po sa 35 and 1973, meron ho silang parehong mention ng social justice. Yeah? Social justice meaning uh, those who have less in life will have more in law, sabi ito ni uh, Magsaysay. No? And uh, ito ang basis ng uh, maraming mga legislations that uh, agrarian reform, no? Ayan, mayroon tagadar dito, si Father. May ayan uh, din ang uh, progressive taxation and all of those things, social services, social welfare. These are all uh, offshoot of the concept of social justice. Okay? Kukunin na yan and popondohan para sa lahat. But in 87 Constitution, doon sa kanilang declaration of principles and policies, wala na po doon yung Mention of social justice. Sabi ko, wala nga, no? Pero naalala ko, ay, sandali. Hindi lang pala isang provision ang ginawa. Meron ng isang buong article. So the entire article is just laid down for social justice. So if you would see, social justice and human rights were lumped together in one because they both talk about what? The inalienable rights, the inherent rights of men. So, you would now see the Congress shall have the highest priority to the enact of measures that protect and enhance the right of all people to humane dignity, reduce social, economic, and political inequalities, and remove cultural inequities by what? By, can we read? Equitably diffusing wealth and political power for the common good. At to this end, the state shall regulate the acquisition, ownership, use, and disposition of property. and its increments. Okay? So, I'm sure ito po ay galing sa magandang pagnanais, but most of the time, many oh, many uh, times, na ginagamit siya na justification by others to overpower um, individuals. no? Labor, agrarian, and natural resources, urban land reform, housing, health, women, roles and rights of people as organization, and human rights. are amongst those which are stated in the Constitution. So, once na mag-approach po tayo sa discussion 
kung magkakaroon ho ng mga uh, constitutional reform or amendment, isa ho ito sa mga bagay na dapat pag-isipan at tingnan ho. And uh, it would really be great if Christians would have a position on things. Okay? Now, question. Is it necessarily wrong na meron hong social justice, meron hong ganito mga redistribution of wealth? And I would say this. No? I will just jump through these slides. Kasi, um, I've... And I would I want to say this, no? A people who does not exercise their responsibility on life, liberty, and property is really susceptible to tyranny. Sabi nga, kung wala kang plano sa buhay mo, merong ibang magpaplano para sa iyo. When self-government breaks down, external dominations becomes desirable. Di ba? Kaya ho yung mga walang plano, yung tamad, sige kung ano lang sabihin mo sa akin, kanong gusto mo, gawin mo sa akin. Only a people who is self-governed and is able to exercise their responsibilities to live their lives in the fullness of God, to choose and pursue their God-given purpose, and manage, multiply, and utilize their resources as God's entrustments can fully enjoy the blessings of a Republican state. So, ang choice po actually na sa atin. Right? Because it's not enough that we have this rights to life, liberty, and property. But more than just rights to liberty and property, God has given us the responsibility to live, to pursue our calling, increase, manage well the properties as His faithful stewards. Hindi ho mahalaga kung maliit man yan, okay lang. The issue is faithfulness. If you have small money, it's okay. You grow it, you learn how to manage it. This is the secret of Christian dominion and effectiveness. By living out our responsibilities to life, liberty, and property, we would be able to influence the world and society. People who live out their responsibility over rights need not depend on anyone, especially the government. Okay? So my prayer today, so tapos na ho, hindi ko itutuloy kasi uh, the other parts, uh, more detailed ones, will be discussed. Uh, on the fourth part of our lecture. But let me just challenge each and every one of us. No, Today, we are not only called by God to live and move and have our beings today, but we are called really by God to cultivate whatever we have. Hindi ho tayo dapat nakaasa kung kanino man at alam niyo po kadalasan yung mga tao na puro gobyerno ang sinisisi, ibig sabihin, hindi ho nila nare-realize that you know, their prosperity does not depend upon any government, any person. It really depends upon your relationship and your understanding of God's stewardship sa buhay po natin. Um, if any one of you will be in government, remember this, the secret for people to be unshackled from poverty is for them to understand their responsibility to life, liberty, and property. Kung, hindi ka, kung pinanganak ka, alam mo na mayroong panawagan ng Lord sa'yo. Kapag may panawagan ng Lord sa'yo, responsibilidad mong hanapin ang panawagan ng Lord sa'yo. Kung meron kang ari-arian, meron kang pinangahawakan, responsibility mo na pagaringin yan, padamihin yan, pahusayin. Because at the end of the day, it's not the government, it's not whoever who would ask for an accounting from us. It's our Lord that we would stand at sabihin natin, Lord, itong binigay mo sa akin, ito ang ginawa ko. Lord, pangit yung nangyari sa akin. Lord, you know, I was born with a broken family. Lord, I was born an orphan. Lord, but this is what I did. This is what I did with what you have given me. And you know, if Christians would begin to understand this, you know, we would be able to prosper regardless, regardless of the situation in our country. And at the, at the same time, let us also long for a proper understanding of the limits of government para sa atin. Pag meron ho kayong mga narinig ho ng mga tao nagpipresenta na kalang plataforma, isipin niyo po, okay, does it, you know, is it a JJ? Is it a <laughs> Lakian? Or is it a Cubs, and Lord, what, what do you really want for us? 
makikita ho natin yung mga depressed areas sa communities natin, okay sa kanila, sige. You dominate over us for all we care. Basta you give us what we need. But, okay, ganun. Pero, hindi ho natin marirealize ang life, liberty, and property and God's plan for each and every one of us. Remember, it's not government, it's not politics that feeds your family. It's not government, it's not politics that would discover new drugs against sicknesses and disease. It's not government and politics that would create businesses. It's not government or politics that would, you know, help us excel in all of these things. It's the individuals who have risen above their limitations. Amen? Let us pray. Let's bow our heads and let us pray. Father, we bless you. We glorify you, Lord. Can we just lift our hands to the Lord? Lord, we thank you. We give you back all the praises today. We thank you, Lord, for allowing um, me, Lord, to finish, Lord, this uh, presentation. And I pray, Lord, that um, each and every one of us, Lord God, would be um, taught by the Holy Spirit even as we go home, even as we uh, uh, continue to converse with one another, even as we would go about the, the things that we need to do, Lord, dalangin po namin, Lord, that you would just show us the nuances of your message today. Lord, in my um, finiteness, Lord, I pray that your infinite power, Lord God, would speak to each and every one. Lord, that this message, Lord, of the responsibility of life, liberty, and property, Lord, would resonate in our hearts, Lord, that it would guide us, Lord, in, in looking and evaluating, Panginoon, the policies that we seek for, Lord, in understanding our government, understanding the people. Lord, help us not to point fingers against people. Lord, wag sisihin, Panginoon, ang, even, Lord, yung mga leaders lang, Lord, pero tingnan ho namin kung anong pwede naming magawa. Lord, I pray that you would arm the church, Lord, arm, arm your body, Lord, and allow us to speak and to teach these things. Not only, Lord God, in, in, in a platform like this, but in our families, Lord. Sa aming mga anak, Lord. Sa amin pong mga members sa church, mga kasama, mga kaibigan namin, to encourage each and every one, Lord, that, that their lives are valuable, Lord. That you died for them. That you have given them, Lord, get gifts and faculties, Lord. And you have given them opportunities, Panginoon. And Lord, if we would be faithful, then you would bless us. If we would be courageous, Lord God, if we, would be, if we would hang on to your words, Lord, Lord, that's your, your, your glory would be seen in our lives. Bless each and everyone, Panginoon. Um, and as we continue on this series, we pray, Lord, that um, uh, you would continue to equip us, Lord, and raise more people, Lord God, for your glory and for your honor and for your kingdom. In this, we thank and pray in Yahuwah's name. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. So, um